town meetings, love of nature and community, brewing a little beer even. I'm here in the home of Todd Sestari in Hopkinton to talk to him about his service to community as a member of the Board of Selectmen and his life here, uh, as well as beyond and the places he has been and some of the life experiences he's had. Looking forward to hearing his stories. Hi, Todd. Uh, thank you for having me in your beautiful home this afternoon in the spring and just lovely outside in the uh, surroundings here in Hopkinton. Um, I'm here to talk and get to know you uh, through our interview for the town, for Meet Your Neighbor a bit, um, and hear some of your stories of life. I was uh, introduced to you uh, by a mutual friend who told me that she thought you one of the kindest people in town as a town official. And I know that you have been very committed as a member of the Board of Selectmen in our town and you're about to transition out as well. I wonder if we could start there. Uh, any observations as you're transitioning out of your work and commitment for so many years now? Um, how many? Three terms? Is yeah, it? three terms. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been nine years that That's I've been on time. the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. It has been a while, and uh, it's been an enjoyable time. Mm -hmm. And there are parts of me that would love to continue. Mm -hmm. um, I love Hopkinton. I like being part of the process. Mm -hmm. I feel that I'm much more a part of the process, or for me personally, if I can be involved on a continuous basis. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, everybody has the opportunity to be involved and come to the meetings, mm -hmm. make comments on certain topics, and of course, you know, go to our town meetings and uh, actually have a vote uh, in different things mm -hmm. at that point. Um, but I find that for me to really feel involved, it's, it's got to be more continuous. And mm -hmm. if it comes time for town meeting, I think I fall into probably uh, a situation that a lot of people do where you're just getting ready for town meeting a couple of days beforehand, looking at all the issues, trying to do whatever research you can on the things that you're truly interested in, mm -hmm. and then go to town meeting, as mm -hmm. opposed to being there for all of the discussions and hearing different viewpoints along the way. So mm -hmm. uh, I've enjoyed it, and I'll still try to be involved in town. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, But I believe in term limits also. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's time to get some new opinions, mm -hmm. new ideas. Well, thank you for your good service for our town. What would you say you are, what you come away or you learned that you didn't expect to learn from this work? Boy, I think, I think part of it is everybody looks at government in general and they see that things move slowly and they think you know why don't we just do it differently why can't we do x why can't we do y if i was there i would do it differently mm -hmm. and you know i've i've been on the board with different members who have come on and they thought that they were going to get things done really quickly and do things differently and then as you get on and you start seeing all the different regulations that you might need to conform with or the different pieces to make sure that everybody has their fair say in the process uh, or even in the final decision making process when you start realizing that you sometimes have a lot more information when you're on the board than when you're just watching from afar mm. and you need to factor that into your decisions all of a sudden all of a sudden, everything that the board's doing doesn't seem so wacky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, certainly, certainly people have different opinions even while they're on the board. Uh, but it's not always as cut and dry when you're, when you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's, I think that's the biggest thing that I came away with. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. um, well, that is good for uh, the rest of us as residents to know that as well and be a part of town meeting and uh, voice. Um, and now uh, it is time to transition on. Here you are in Hopkinton. Uh, I am wondering, uh, at this time in your life, you're here. Uh, 
but what brought you here in the history? Uh, wh why Hopkinton? How'd you get here? Yeah. Um, you know, my wife and I, we met in Boston, and we originally lived in Charlestown, and yeah. when wow. we got married, we moved to Winchester. We were mm -hmm. in Winchester for a couple of years, then we started our family, mm -hmm. and we wanted to get a little bit closer to our families. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife grew up in Millbury. I grew up in the western part of the state, in West Springfield. Mm -hmm. so Massachusetts all your life? Yeah, Massachusetts mm -hmm. all my life, except while I was in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we wanted to move a little bit closer and have more of the family network together. Mm -hmm. So we started out in Westboro. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we started outgrowing our home in Westboro, we started looking for that next level home. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time in Westboro, it was a big jump <laughs> from where we were to the next home. And when you got there, what we were looking at just wasn't wasn't the type of home that we were looking mm -hmm. for, whether it was the neighborhood or build quality or whatever, you know. So my wife, she does research on everything. And mm -hmm. uh, quite literally, each time we've moved, you know, it involves about two years of research, mm -hmm. both researching the sale of our home and researching, researching where we're gonna buy our next mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. And so we looked at a lot of ver uh, different towns. We looked at Harvard, we looked at Southboro, we looked mm -hmm. at Westboro, we looked more at Hopkinton, Holliston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we certainly wanted something more rural, you mm -hmm. know, suburban to rural. And, um, you know, when we came through Hopkinton, it had the right mix of mm -hmm. so many different components. Mm -hmm. uh, it had a strong school system. The community itself was a beautiful community. We would drive in from uh, Westboro, and so we would be coming in uh, past the state park, and mm -hmm. you could look at Lake Whitehall, and there's not a tremendous view that you have, you know, as you're mm -hmm. as you're uh, coming down 135, but you know, as you're passing the parking lot for the boat ramp, you know, you can start seeing out there in the lake, and then we'd come down Winter Street, and we'd see, you know, we'd see the lake, and. So it really just kind of captured us from that perspective mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we looked at homes all around Hopkinton, and uh, we really liked this neighborhood mm -hmm. in particular, and mm -hmm. waited, and we found the home that we liked. Well, so. fortunate for Hopkinton. Oh, well, yes. it's kind of you to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, it sounds, when we were talking earlier, you feel, have a strong connection uh, to being outdoors uh, and the earth uh, environment around us uh, yeah. all your life uh, growing up uh, where you no no connected? I wouldn't say no, no. not so much then <laughs> so it's more later life yeah you. you know I mean I always as a kid of course you always you like being outside and I used to mm -hmm. be outside and you know play with my neighborhood friends mm -hmm. and you know we'd be outside a lot but it wasn't until I was in college that I started getting more into uh, outdoor sports that mm -hmm. um, that an adult <laughs> would partake in anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when I started skiing. And, mm -hmm. you know, after school, I started getting into cycling. Um, and, you know, it wasn't until I met my wife, she urged me to take sailing lessons. So I enjoy mm -hmm. sailing. Mm -hmm. um, I golfed a little bit when I was in high school, but I, I gave it up for about eight years because... Uh, I was either going to start throwing clubs in the water or uh -oh. uh, <laughs> or I had to never play for a while. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. so I gave it up and then, you know, after after a little bit more maturity set in, then I was able to go back. Mm -hmm. Without throwing Without throwing clubs, clubs and, mm -hmm. and actually take it as a game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I enjoy being outside, though, and that's where mm -hmm. I spend a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, and uh, going back in time... Uh, it sounds like you like to be with a community of your in your neighborhood uh, as a child playing outdoor games together. Uh, Absolutely. Was, that was important, even though you weren't so much into nature then. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. You know, whether it was just, you know, the typical childhood stuff, you know, uh, getting yeah. together for some pickup baseball pick or, okay. you know, street hockey, riding bikes around, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So pretty typical childhood. Uh, my dad was uh, on the police force in mm -hmm. my town. My mom was a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really kind of learned, um, uh, you know, some obligation, I think, to serve the community right. through them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, I had, I had a good upbringing. My parents were strict. Mm 
mm -hmm. um, but fair. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've tried to emulate my parenting, uh, mm -hmm. emulate their parenting in mine, I should say. Yes. So they were teachers in that way about being strict, fair, and then um, uh, in being uh, described as kind. Where would you say that uh, virtue came in for your life? Yeah, well, you know, I think that, uh, you know, again, with, with my parents, it was one of those things where no matter how strict they were and, you know, how much, you know, I don't know what you'd want to call it, but correction, you know, that they'd want to take, mm -hmm. you know, uh, lessons that they're trying to teach, mm -hmm. they, it would always be clear that, you know, there was love. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing that I try to start with my own family, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, but then also they always taught uh, to a, a respect for everybody around you, you mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. whether it was through their words and, you know, going to church and, and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was, that was something that was, you know, deep, deeply ingrained in our family mm -hmm. was having a common respect for others. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it sounds like respect, uh, across the board and, uh, not so much anyone is better than anyone else, uh, which is uh, yeah. often what kindness is about. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we all rely on each other and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the, uh, profession or vocation of any one person. Uh, you know, I know that I can't do everything that needs to be done around my house or on my car or, mm -hmm. you know, wherever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that if people weren't doing some jobs, then I wouldn't be able to enjoy the things that I enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, uh, you know, riding my bike, you know, there's mm -hmm. somebody fixing my bike every now and then, you know, mm -hmm. I can't do all of that, you know, or, or pizza. I heard or, you like pizza. Yeah, I love pizza, <laughs> hamburgers, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You know, going on vacation and mm -hmm. going zip lining with my daughter. Oh. You know, I mean, uh -huh. if, if somebody didn't set that up and if somebody weren't working that, then, mm -hmm. you know, uh, then I, I wouldn't be able to enjoy those types mm -hmm. of things. So the, so the interconnection of people. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think that, uh, I think that a lot of times in, in our society today, people start losing some of that mm -hmm. uh, and I think that there gets to be such a competition for feeling like you know you've won uh, mm -hmm. you know in some transaction mm -hmm. and that's something that even in my professional life you know whether it's negotiating with a software vendor or something like that um, I've always tried to make I, I look I look for somebody who wants to create a relationship mm -hmm. and not just sell me a piece of software uh, yeah, a human and, relationship and absolutely yes. and and in doing that you know I also realize that I'm looking for somebody who understands that we both need to win out of the transaction mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of people describe negotiations a successful negotiation as being one where both people feel like you know, they didn't win. Mm. Um, I'd rather see it where mm. we both win. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and uh, is this something that you see out there uh, currently uh, going I, on in the field of... I, I, you know, I certainly think that there are plenty of people who have that same yeah. mindset, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that there are also a number of people that mm -hmm. in business just want to win every bit that they can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether that's in some other business or... You know, I think that one place where things are falling apart is our healthcare system, mm -hmm. you know, and that's yeah. obvious. It's been happening for a long time. Mm -hmm. I work in healthcare on, on the software side mm -hmm. and it, uh, it always seems to be, you know, we, we've seen, we've seen doctors who do tremendous work for our communities, uh, go from being, I think that, I think that socially they're still very prestigious and they hold a, they hold an important place in society. Uh, but I think that we've seen their rewards uh, diminished so much over the last couple of decades. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think part of that is because of, you know, uh, maybe profiteering on mm -hmm. the payer side, the insurance company side. We have these huge insurance companies, and I've worked for some of them as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, too often the motive ends up uh, being, you know, more profit mm -hmm. and more money. Mm -hmm. And so now you've got doctors who have to pay, you know, so much money because of, uh, uh, you know, just for, for their insurance. Uh, mm -hmm. And at the same time, mm -hmm. they're pinched on the other side by the payers, you know, who are saying, well, you know, we don't know if your services are really worth all that much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And so now you've got this person who's doing a 
tremendous amount uh, or tremendously important service for society and they're getting pinched on pay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and how does the, it affect the future of health care? Yeah, exactly. Who wants to go in? Um, yeah, that is uh, very important. Uh, uh, we we are, are look, seeing how very important health care is, you know, as we uh, bump into issues of our own health and then you know, so many people are getting frustrated. Yeah, right? and, and then I've spoken with other doctors who have, you know, said that they decided to go into areas where, you know, it's just going to be elective procedures. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, if, if you're coming to me for my service, you know, you're going to guarantee me payment out of your own pocket instead of your insurance company's mm -hmm. pocket. Mm -hmm. So I can pay, I can charge you what I want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, certainly I think that most of those people are in it, uh, you know they're they're doing a fair amount of profiteering on their own, yeah. I guess. Uh, but those aren't the services. It's not the plastic surgeries necessarily that are going to be, you know, trying to help any of the problems right. in society and, and health in general. <laughs> well, I see you have an important insider view on this topic as you've worked on different sides of this issue as. Um, as it seems like you have in life. I also see that uh, the time is uh, mm. running by. <laughs> uh, one thing some people might not know is that you worked as a bartender also earlier in life. I uh, did, I did. Yeah, and what did that teach you uh, in life? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that was, uh, again, thanks to my parents. Um, mm. You know, my father had the insight when I went to college, he recognized that I was a bit of an introvert. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was one of those kids that, you know, started programming computers when I was yeah. in second grade and you know <laughs> that kind of thing and mm. I didn't really talk to other people mm -hmm. and, and uh, didn't really do much socially and you know he had a friend of a friend who owned a bar in Syracuse New York mm -hmm. and they got he got me a job there and uh, you know taught me to taught me to talk to people yeah. and mm -hmm. I it a really lot carried, of different people probably yeah, a lot right? of different people mm -hmm. and you know I think it it taught myself, it helped to teach me that, that I enjoyed uh, meeting new people. Mm -hmm. And you know, that carried into when I got into software development as, in a formal nature and mm -hmm. as a profession. You know, I, while I was working at a startup, I was a 20th employee of a company. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was able to wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. And so I was going out and I was meeting customers and I was meeting uh, you know, prospects and I was doing training and all that type of thing. And that made me realize that just staying back in the office and developing software wasn't enough for me either. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get out and meet the customer, wanted to figure out what the problem was that we were trying to solve before mm -hmm. I would just go and start trying to solve it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of carried on through my career. Yeah, again, uh, a larger system uh, interconnected perspective you have uh, brought uh, coming from bartending as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. And you are, I understand, a bit of a bartender at home? Uh, yeah. <laughs> For in your spare time, yeah. whatever that might be. But. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've, uh, you know, it started out, it started out just trying to make different alcohols, you mm -hmm. know, whether it was limoncello, which was, you know, an easy start and things like that. Mm. And then I had a friend from back in high school who, He's the one who got me into biking, and he also got me into brewing beer. Mm -hmm. And so very been, popular these days. Yeah, right? and I've mm -hmm. been brewing for I don't know a bit over ten years, mm -hmm. um, and I enjoy doing that. And I'd probably do it more often, but I can't keep up with drinking everything that I brew. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, I enjoy that and uh, making cider and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Do you make well. a dark stout? Uh, most recently, I I created a, uh, a porter, a porter which uh, yeah. yeah it wasn't a stout mm -hmm, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it actually I, I thought it was one of my better beers. Ah, well, so congratulations uh, and um, spare time otherwise I mean we hear about all of the work that you've done through life and then raising a family as well uh, what can you say about uh, spare time you've been outdoors and you're an athlete uh, you are. You had mentioned earlier on a swim team. Yeah, I do. I'm on a master's swim team, mm -hmm. uh, which, which <laughs> I don't. I don't consider that to take time out of my day because it happens at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I do that a few days a week uh -huh. um, in Framingham at the Y, 
You have and to be there at when? At, at five. five. Yeah, okay. at five. Not just wake up at five. Okay. Right. Yeah, I wake up a little after four. So. Mm. Wow. Okay. Um, so that's good. I've just started mm -hmm. that in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to swim, you know, when I was when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was good to get back in the water. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on a board for a condo association up in Vermont. Ah, uh, you like to go to Vermont uh, yeah, for yeah. vacations? Yeah, with through your the family. winter. Yeah, through the winter mm -hmm. we're skiing, and uh, you know, oftentimes when we're trying to figure out times for meetings on weekends for the board mm -hmm. as we're going through budget season, mm -hmm. you might hear me and Brian Herr both saying, oh, not available on the weekends. Mm -hmm. it's, we're up skiing. Uh, uh -huh. He's in a different part of Vermont. Ah, but, uh, okay. But yeah. Your so. paths don't cross there. Paths no. don't cross. No, <laughs> no illegal meetings. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, uh -huh. um, but yeah, yeah, I enjoy yeah. it. I enjoy mm -hmm. it. So. Well, um, what would you say about your uh, bucket list, as they say, and looking ahead, any uh, dreams uh, that you have in the future for endeavors, uh, hobbies, um, pursuits in work or recreational time? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, uh, I keep looking for a way to uh, bring some of my hobbies into my profession, you know, and maybe, maybe get into uh, the beer industry. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I don't think that uh, opening a brewery is the way I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I look for, you know, some of the peripheral businesses or opportunities. Uh, you know, as I said about the gold rush, you know, it wasn't necessarily the people looking for gold that made all the money. Mm -hmm. It was the people selling the shovels. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's kind of the area that I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, I love to travel. Ah. Mm -hmm. So um, you've traveled a bit. In the yeah, world? yeah, we've yeah we've started traveling more. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, and, and taking the kids and mm -hmm. getting them out to places that um, that are new to them now that they're of age where they'll remember it. Yes, <laughs> by car or plane. Uh, plane. You know, mm -hmm. we've, we've tried getting them to various places in mm -hmm. Europe and uh, you know the islands and things like that, but places where they can see different cultures. Mm. Uh, so I'd like a to favorite place in the, in the world that you've been. Oh, I think that, uh, well, within the United States, I think my favorite place is Jackson hole mm -hmm. and I haven't been there to ski. I've only been there in the summer mm -hmm. and I thought that that was going to be an anxious time being there and not being able to ski, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but it was the most beautiful place I've ever been. Uh, uh you know, and another the place beauty though, was I of... think just, uh, just, the mountainous mm -hmm. uh, terrain mm -hmm. and you know it's just you know it's it's clear that to me that there's a higher being mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when you look yeah. at that uh -huh. and well, I always no I, small comment there yeah too. you know and I, and I always used to I always used to listen to reports about uh, you know needing to put more money toward saving you know that type of environment mm -hmm. in our national parks and things like that and I used to be like oh come on you know we, we put enough money to that and it was within the first five minutes of landing out there and mm -hmm. looking at things mm -hmm. and just my jaw dropping mm -hmm. and saying, okay, mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, outside the U.S., you know, and this is just of the places that I've been, mm -hmm. um, Lake Garda in Italy. Uh, uh -huh. You know, again, it's a beautiful place, but uh, I, I, love, I love Italy and just, you know, being there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a relaxing place fantastic food and you know that particular lake is in a northern area close to the Austrian border and mm -hmm. um, it's just it's just a great place uh, it's a great place to vacation anyway yeah so a more a slower pace uh, over there perhaps. you know yeah it can be a slow pace mm -hmm. uh, you know but at the same time a lot of outdoor activities uh, activities in the mountains and mm -hmm. a lot of cycling but you also have a lake there so mm -hmm. there's a lot of sailing and activities on the water as well so mm -hmm. it kind of brings in the best of both worlds for me yeah yeah well so more time going back there or some other I'm sure destination we'll yeah, I'm sure you know and that's that's one of those questions we always have to figure out, mm -hmm. right? Is yeah. Do you go back to the places you know you love, mm. or do you try to find new places? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, but I'm sure mm -hmm. I'll be back there. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, we only have a few minutes left, but it's been very interesting to talk with you about the uh, circle of your life a bit, and um, that you are a an explorer and a and a connector in a way in uh, the different things that you've done and and uh, the importance of community wherever you are 
And who knows, we might be seeing you uh, somehow related to uh, brewing beer in the future uh, at some destination or uh, outdoors uh, on bikes or, yeah. uh, or with computers still, because yeah. I imagine there's passion yeah. there in, in that work since you were doing it since age of six. Well, yeah, yeah. If you look at that, look at it that way. Yeah. Absolutely. How about for your wish for our future generations, being very much a person in local government involved with helping to steer us forward? Yeah. Um, well, you know, obviously we need to we need to protect the environment, mm -hmm. and we also need to uh, you know make sure that our future generations, our kids, are growing up with the things that they need. Um, you know, we've. Uh, and I hate to I hate to bring this all back to, uh, you know, my experiences on the board. You know, mm -hmm. certainly though, you know, we look at budget issues in town and things like that. And, uh, you know, I've been on the board, and there's a school committee. I have an incredible amount of appreciation and respect for mm -hmm. the people that I've worked with on both boards. Uh, and one of the things that I've really tried to use in my approach to things is an understanding that. Everybody's just trying to do their job mm -hmm. and what they've been elected for, or, you know, and, and help make Hopkinton better. Mm. Um, but I think that education is an incredibly important thing. Mm. Um, not everybody decides to use their education to go work in an office. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's uh, our, our vocational system is incredibly strong here too. Uh, but there's there's a need to broaden it outside of Hopkinton as well. Mm -hmm. Not all communities have that same mindset mm. and uh, and I think that I think that that does need to be pushed more at a national level mm -hmm. so uh, you know I mean our future depends on you know the the, the kids that we have coming up as well you know yeah. I mean um, we're kind of getting to an age where we need to start uh, you know letting letting that next generation come in and, mm -hmm. and steer the ship a bit mm -hmm. so steering the ship forward with a lot of important um, values uh, in life and getting along and, yeah. and doing our best while we're here and feeling our connection. Absolutely. So thank you for your interview and your good work in this town. And I wish you the best wherever you are going forward. Thanks, Cheryl.